Shabbat Shalom. So there is always a, uh, a lot of talk when people get together about what's your bucket list? Everybody putting together their dreams, talking about the places they want to go, the accomplishments they want to accomplish, the experience they want to have. And honestly, that's not a bad thing. Honestly, I don't think we talk about our mortality enough. And a bucket list may be a slightly jovial way of putting it, but reminding ourselves that there is a limited amount of time that we have on this earth to do the things that we want to do is a reminder that we should do the things that we want to do. Obviously, being a rabbi, I have to put in the uh, fine print, uh, do the things you want to do as long as they are commensurate with Torah and its values. Please do not transgress any of the commandments in the performance of the things you want to do. But with that being said, there is a whole lot of the world that can be experienced that is absolutely in keeping with Torah. And getting together, talking about that, making plans, and trying to do it maybe slightly earlier than, uh, oh, someday, is not a bad idea. In fact, we get a reminder of that, uh, of that mentality every single week. It's called Shabbat. God gave us a day each week where we would be reminded that even God took a break early. God didn't wait until the end of days to take a day off. God took a day off after only working for seven days, which, you know, was pretty early on. Most companies don't give you holiday time after only working there for a week. And yet God, being the boss, was able to give himself that time and remind us that we have to give ourselves and each other that kind of time to see who we are when we are not chasing the temporary activities that are needed to go on with our life. But there is another side to it. You see, it's very easy once you get into the bucket list mentality to think that life is simply a place where we can live out those dreams. And while it is true that there is much we can do that is permitted by Torah, there is also much we could get ourselves into, permitted as well, that would nonetheless lead to mostly a hedonistic life. And Judaism cautions us. The book of Kohelet is replete with warnings that hedonism is not actually a path towards happiness. Just doing what you want does not create meaning. It does not create a sense of satisfaction. It creates momentary pleasure, which is perfectly fine and a good part of life, but definitely not something that should be used as a long-term goal. It should not be the North Star to simply enjoy the next minute more than the last minute. So how can we frame our conversation to include both the bucket list, but to also include something that will guide us in a more meaningful way. Well, morbid as it sounds, think of your eulogy. Yes, we don't like thinking of that because it implies that we won't be around to hear it, but think for a moment of what will others say about you when you are gone. I can guarantee you they are not going to talk about that time that you caught that 50-foot marlin, if they come in 50 foot. They are not going to talk about the watch that you owned or that amazing expensive car or even necessarily the other professional accomplishments that you might have worked very hard to achieve. A few, perhaps. If you have become outstanding in a field that helps others, you might find people still remembering that. If you simply got the corner office, a year ahead of what was average in your firm, you'd be surprised how quickly people will forget that when it comes to remembering you. So how do we make sure our eulogy turns out the way we want it to be? Well, first of all, we need to think, what is it I actually stand for? What is it about me that I think is worthwhile in this world? What is it about me that I would want someone else to remember, to carve on my tombstone? And it's not going to be had the latest phone or had the biggest car. It's going to be something deeper and unique to each of us. But the rub is that we don't actually get to write our own eulogies. Yes, I've seen people who have tried to do that. Please don't. Uh, but more importantly, others will be writing it for us. Which means after you've decided what you want your eulogy to be, you have to then think who is likely to be delivering words at my passing, who is likely to stand in front of the community and say, this is who they were? Then you have to make sure they actually know who you are. Sometimes we take it for granted 
that our family members or our close friends know who we are, what we stand for, what we seek in life. But very often we leave that unsaid. Very often the majority of our time together is filled with other activities that can often blur what we want to be the message of our life, what we want to be the essence of the meaning that we are seeking in this world. So it means you have to actually talk about what is important to you with the people that are important to you. Don't take it as read just because you've spent time together that they know what matters to you. Tell them. Explain why it matters. Explain what you are hoping to achieve. Let them share in that dream as well, even if they have their own. You're not going to lose friends because you talk about what's important. You're not going to bore your family by talking about your aspirations, your dreams, and your hopes for what your life and this world should be like. In fact, you will find yourself being brought closer together. Life is not simply a struggle of well-clothed animals working out what we're going to do before we uh, can no longer work. Life is the spirit made flesh in this world, finding a way to bring the gift that God has given us to the next level of fruition, to bring it to a new level of meaning and of significance. And that is best accomplished, that is only accomplished, as a shared task. Do not hide inside yourself who you are. Do not hide what is important from those around you. They are the ones who will be remembering you. And even before that, they are the ones who live with you. They are the ones that you can look to for support in times of need. They are the ones who will look to you when they are in need. And you will find that in addition to the more fun aspects of the bucket list, those relationships, those encounters, those moments of closeness, those will give much more pleasure than just the latest trinket, will give you much more meaning than the corner office, and will give you much more satisfaction for however long we are each year together. Shabbat Shalom.